I was Tanya Ashaboy Rico from Street Scores and free agency is chaotic right now. It is spiraled out of control. You can tell that per usual, every time everybody's at the combine, players, coaches, GMs, everybody's at the combine. There's a lot of talking going on. There's a lot of behind the scenes deals getting done. A lot of how you feel about this player. How do you feel about potentially trading for this pick? You know, it's a lot of that going on. And immediately after the combine is over, day number one, Monday, free agency player movement out of control so we got to take a look at a lot of things that are going on especially some of the most notable players that's going to be available or at the very least could be available could be rumored to be available trade being cut whatever most notably there's a report that the washington commanders are interested in former pro bowl cornerback shaquille griffin that's bouncing around the nfl also linebacker eric kendricks and tight end dalton schultz were both cut should the commanders go and get those guys Jameis winston is potentially going to get cut should we go bring him in as competition for sam howell or a potential veteran backup like ron rivera clearly really wants also should we trade for derrick henry he's available looks like the titans are just having a whole garage sale and they look like they're primed the tank boy they must really want caleb williams or drake may zach cunningham taylor lowen if you have any chance of helping them to win games you're out of here and then that's just the start the list there's a few more players as well but those are some of the headliners and before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday just like yesterday where i have the call in live show where y'all can call in you can voice your opinions ask whatever questions you may have all of that you're a part of the show it's really you all show more than mine so make sure you pull up for that and stay tuned for all of the content film sessions mock drafts free agency stuff like this any commander's news the sell of the team everything stay tuned for literally everything you see the video clips i put out of any random thing even though i don't make money from it usually but i just do my best to give y'all all, all everything that the commanders got going on even if it's the dc defenders chanting f dan snyder but either way man let's go ahead and get to this video let's get it All right, so apparently, according to Chad Forbes of NFL Draft Bites, when released, the commanders will have interest in Jaguars corner Shaquille Griffin. And that's a really interesting report because normally with reports like that, you tend to see like such and such teams will be interested in this player when they're released or after their release or look for these teams to be interested in trading for this guy. There's normally at least like two or three team names included, sometimes even like five or more. But it just said after Shaquille Griffin is going to be released, expect the commanders to be interested. And that doesn't mean that no other teams will be interested but the fact that we're the only name there shows that maybe we've expressed the most interest out loud as far as league circles go again everybody was at the combine reporters players coaches gms everybody involved with football was at the combine and so maybe chad forbes heard something while he was there and maybe there's just not a lot of competition out there for him i mean again this guy has bounced around a little bit the jaguars are expected to release or attempt to trade cornerback shaquille griffin in the coming days this was tweeted out march 2nd by jeremy fowler a release was saved them 13.1 million dollars in cap space when they got him from the seahawks they thought they got the one boy they gave him a nice little contract but remember he's only 27 years old a former pro bowler even though you can argue that it was more of the seahawks system than him because the way he looked for the jaguars it wasn't very good the jaguars had a lot of positives going on shaquille griffin just wasn't one of them in my opinion maybe somebody else could watch the film and love what he put on tape i didn't love it i definitely did not like him leaving the Jaguars as much as I did with him leaving the Seahawks when I kind of wanted him even back then I didn't really wanted him but I was interested now I'm like eh but still he's only 27 a former cornerback a former pro bowler there's nothing that says that he can't get back to that situation especially if you put him in the same or at least a similar system to what he was in for the Seahawks when he was a pro bowl level corner so don't pull a, if we are actually interested in this guy don't pull a William Jackson bring him here and ask him to do what you want him to do 
do no you need to tailor the system around him and i'm not sure if our system supports that but who knows man he's available and he'll probably sign a relatively cheap contract just off of the chance to prove himself again and earn a bigger contract after this free agency who knows and then moving on the vikings have released linebacker eric kendricks and i feel like I, probably out of everybody we've talked about today i feel like this is the one i would want the most but with this one especially this one the price matters a lot man just to go back a little bit eric kendricks time in minnesota has come to an end the vikings former all pro linebacker is being released after eight seasons with the club the 45th overall pick in the 2015 draft kendricks made 113 regular season starts in minnesota as well as six in the postseason he has 919 career tackles 54 for loss nine interceptions 15 sacks 51 passes defense four forced fumbles and six fumble recoveries a tackling machine kendricks has recorded at least 108 tackles seven consecutive seasons last season kendricks made 137 tackles while helping the vikings capture the nfc north division crown and i remember it was looking like i mean of course eric kendricks has always been good but people were thinking heading into the previous season that maybe he's a little washed up but he went out there and balled out for the vikings now granted he's not like an all pro linebacker anymore but the main point that i have is that he's better than anything we have currently on roster he's better than jamin davis i love jamin davis i love his potential maybe he could eventually reach pro Bowl, all pro level heights but i wouldn't put my life savings on it this is a guy that's literally done it that produces no matter what i definitely don't think dejon harris david mayo nathan gary and restricted free agent khalid hudson is better than eric kendricks right now and you could probably get eric kendricks cheaper than bobby wagner for both of those guys i'm like what's the money like i want both of them but i'm not willing to spend our entire cap space on either of those guys i really want to prioritize bringing back the guys we already have long term and even going ahead and giving cameron curl what he wants long term so we can sure that up as well so i'm prioritizing deron Payne and cameron curl before outside free agents even though i would love to bring in a linebacker a corner an offensive lineman in free agency ron rivera literally said it himself i uploaded the clip of him saying it he said he wants to do everything he can in free agency so that by the time we get to the draft they're drafting who they want to draft and not who they need to draft so basically he wants to go with the best player available approach and make sure every hole is filled by the time we get to the draft that way you can get literally whoever's left who's ever the best player on the board doesn't matter what your need is you take that player because that's how you build longevity and build a better team best player available you fill holes in free agency you get the best players that are out there in draft i feel like that's just the best winning formula there in my opinion and i'm really happy to hear rivera fills the same way as well but back to my point eric kendricks was ranked from pro football network the 16th best linebacker in the nfl and out of 32 teams that's way better than anything we got i'm actually pretty surprised that they felt like cole holcomb was the 27th even with as little as he played but still the 16th best linebacker only five spots behind tremaine edmonds who man i would love to get i highly doubt we will because i'm pretty sure he's gonna cost a lot of money but i would spaz if we got tremaine edmonds somehow man but eric kendrick 16th tremaine edmonds 11 cj mosley 12 and then also going back to bobby wagner they had him ranked fourth out of the entire nfl out of linebackers last year even at his age he did ball out for the rams though he was one of the top five linebackers in the nfl last year a lot of people may not have necessarily noticed because the rams weren't that good but bobby wagner is still bobby wagner he may not be all pro but he's top five in the nfl and again that's way better than anything we have but again bobby wagner coming off of a 10 million per year deal is probably gonna want more than i'd be willing to give him and then eric kendricks may be asking for less but it still may be a little bit more than what i'm willing to give him as well so we'll see but i would love to bring in eric kendricks if he's willing to sign a very cheap deal doubt it especially for us maybe he'll try to go to a super bowl contender but you never know man if sam howe balls out and eric b enemy is who we think he is we could be some Super Bowl contenders because this defense is dominant. We just need to shore up that linebacker position and stay healthy. And Eric Kendricks could be one of the final pieces that we need to turn this defense into, at the very least, a top 10. I feel like easily a top five defense if we want it to be. So Shaquille Griffin, eh, Eric Kendricks, yes, please. But only for a certain price. I'm not signing Eric Kendricks for some crazy deal. 
especially nowhere near the 10 million a year that Bobby Wagner was getting. I don't even want to give Bobby Wagner that. Bobby Wagner, let me let me get this straight though. Bobby Wagner is worth 10 million a year, but with how our team is currently set up and the cap space that we have, we just can't do it. But Bobby Wagner is well worth 10 million a year right now for the team that can afford it. I would love to get him, but we just can't do that. And then Eric Kendricks, it just depends on what he's asking for, but definitely nowhere near 10 million a year. It will be just a dream come true if Eric Kendricks or Bobby Wagner for some crazy reason would sign like a cheap one year deal but i doubt it especially at their ages they're not like young and like okay we could do this one year for the cheap and then get this big four or five year contract down the road because by the end of that bobby wagner will be like 37 years old nobody's giving them that nobody's giving eric kendrick's that either so i highly doubt it but we can dream and then next up with Derek Carr headed to new orleans Jameis winston now becomes a likely salary cap casualty new orleans could move on and save 4.4 million dollars against the salary cap but it would leave 11 $11.2 million worth of dead cap, which is crazy. A post June 1st cut would save $12.8 million. So they may wait to do that, but they have three guys eligible that they may want to do that for, and you're only allowed to do two of them. So we'll see. And then again, if you do that, you don't get that $12.8 million in savings until post June 1st, which is well after free agency and everybody's already signed up and things like that. But you never know. Random players end up getting released somewhere around that time and maybe you gain that 12.8 million dollars worth of cap space and you take that money to extend a player pay a player long term or whatever you want to do so it's not necessarily a bad thing to wait till post june 1st to get more savings but maybe as a commanders fan we hope that they don't and they just go ahead and cut them now but again logically it just doesn't make much sense because to save 4.4 million dollars right now or wait till june 1st to save 12.8 I would just wait till June 1st. It's not that serious. But the question goes, do the commanders want to take a chance on them? It seems like it would make a lot of sense for the commanders. Ron Rivera, again, another video that I uploaded, he talked a lot about bringing in a veteran quarterback. He was dead serious. They even asked him, okay, so say you have Sam Howell and you have another young quarterback that you may have just drafted in this upcoming draft. Like say for some reason you get Anthony Richardson, something like that. And you have a draft quarterback, at least another young quarterback competing with Sam Howell, whether you drafted him, undrafted free agent, whatever, do you still want to bring in a veteran? He was like, yes, like I want to bring in a veteran even if we have two other quarterbacks that they're both young. We carried three quarterbacks on roster last season and I'm willing to do that again this upcoming season is basically what he said. So no matter what, we're bringing in a veteran quarterback. I mean, I already thought so just Eric Bieniemy wise a new offensive coordinator is going to want to bring in somebody that's reliable that can run his offense while Sam Howell is still learning the offense and things like that. So I'm thinking it would more than likely be somebody like Chad Henney but then again I think he retired after the Super Bowl but he would have probably have made the most sense it would have been somebody that was a veteran that could run the offense just in case of Sam Howell struggling or he's hurt and can you know possibly win you a game or two if you need him to that makes a lot of sense for Eric Bieniemy. and then Ron Rivera's in again you've heard him I literally uploaded the clip he literally wants a veteran quarterback involved in this QB room no matter what now it's not necessarily going to be somebody that's competing for a start role I don't think it's more than likely just going to be a dependable backup I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a Marcus Mariota or a Teddy Bridgewater y'all already know my feelings on it I would prefer a backup that just has no chance of winning games he could be a veteran sure but I don't want to bring in somebody that's going to come in here and get us to seven eight wins I'm hoping Sam Howell's good enough to get us like 10 or 11 but past that I'm good I prefer to try to get in with the Tennessee Titans on this Caleb Williams Drake May sweepstakes in my opinion I don't want to bring in some high floor veteran backup that all we're going to do is just end up winning seven eight games again not making the playoffs and then picking very late in the draft in the middle of the draft again anyway y'all already know me man i've been saying this for years being that perpetual average right in the middle not good enough to win a super bowl but also not bad enough to get a franchise changing player or at least a higher chance of getting that franchise player i mean there are a lot of drafts where the 16th overall pick ends up making a better selection than the first overall pick it happens but i would still prefer at least to have that chance but if you're going to sign a higher floor veteran quarterback I think Jameis Winston makes a lot of sense first of all with his turnover proneness and just loving to throw interceptions and things like that and I felt like he got hated on really these last couple of seasons where he was playing fairly well but he would just end up getting hurt he was looking like he was potentially good enough to actually be a starting quarterback and win games for the Saints with a straight face but injuries and things like that well 
2021 was the year he got hurt when he was actually balling out and then 2022 i don't even remember what happened i think he was just playing poorly i don't know what happened but yeah he had four touchdowns to five interceptions yeah it just it just wasn't good last year but this is a guy that if you're going to bring in a veteran and say they all cost the same amount marcus Mariota, Jameis winston all of those guys teddy bridgewater i guess Jameis winston would be one of my preferred guys but again i prefer to go with somebody that just won't simply win us seven eight games but then again if you're bringing in a veteran quarterback that's literally what you're bringing them in to be a higher floor guy because you don't know about sam howell's floor and you're excited about his ceiling but we'll see man moving on the rams have given wide receiver Allen robinson's agents permission to seek a trade and la is willing to pay a portion of Allen robinson's 15.25 million guaranteed salary to facilitate a deal so they're just done with him remember he's only 29 years old but they are done the rams are trying to sell shop too man just like the titans man they're going all in on something they're trying to make cap space and the priority is not to win games right now for those two teams it may not necessarily be to go get caleb williams or drake may or something but the priority i know for a fact is not to win the most games possible in 2023 from those two teams for sure but yeah man the rams are willing to pay some of that the rams are willing to eat up some of that cap space that Allen robinson would take up but of course and the commanders were interested in him when he was available as a free agent before he went to the rams actually a couple of years because remember we were interested and then the bears tagged him and then i believe last season he ended up going to the rams and i believe the bears at least tried to tag him that year again as well i think i can't remember but either way the commanders have shown interest there were reports that we were interested in them but at this point with our receiving group we don't need them but of course if you can get them out of that 15.25 million dollars in guaranteed salary if the rams are willing to eat up 14 of that million then sure give up like a no higher than a sixth round pick for them but basically i'm saying my answer is a no it's just unrealistic what i'd be willing to give the rams to even facilitate that trade so i'm good on Allen robinson but i did want to bring it up because the rams really interesting that they're willing to pay and eat up some of that salary cap that it will require but receiver is one of the very few things we like really just don't need like that on this team next up speaking of the titans man they're trying to trade derrick henry he's on the trade block so if they were to trade him pre-june 1st he would eat up 10 million dollars worth of dick cap but they would save 6.2 million dollars and that's why they would potentially do it and then the new team that would get him would only get him for one year 11 million dollars with zero dollars guaranteed which is really interesting similar to the contract that carson wentz was going into this season in with and why we cut him because he was expensive but it was zero dollars guaranteed so if we want to release him you can but Derrick Henry I mean he's too good he's not going to be the Carson Wentz of running back so that part of the contract really doesn't matter you acquired Derrick Henry for 11 million zero dollars guaranteed you're going to end up giving him that 11 million because he's going to ball out and I highly doubt we do this because I love Antonio Gibson I'm excited about Brian Robinson as well and I think Eric Bieniemy is going to bring in some type of third down back similar to JD McKissick that's going to ball out like a Clyde Edwards Elair, something like that a pass catching back that can run routes I like Jared Patterson a lot too but it just doesn't seem like the commanders are do and we're the ones that brought him in as an undrafted free agent and I'm not sure if Eric Bieniemy would like him either so that's why I keep talking about third down backs to replace a JD McKissick type of guy I mean the way that we went after JD McKissick and stole him from the Bills you can tell that there's a need for that player and again with his neck injuries I just don't see him playing anymore at least I hope he doesn't play anymore because I don't want anything severe to happen to him so hey man i don't really see us going for a derrick henry type of guy but i do see us at the very least late in the draft or maybe as a cheap free agent bringing in a guy that's like a third down pass catching back that can run routes and things like that you know eric bien loves those guys i think he's gonna love curtis samuel and antonio gibson you saw what he did with isaiah pachenko i think both of those guys could be better than him easily but again as far as derrick henry goes no it's just not gonna happen it would be fun but nah it's not realistic and then of course also Jalen Ramsey if you trade for him pre-June 1st the new team would have to give him 17 million dollars in 2023 with 12.5 million guaranteed but then 2024 18.5 million dollars against the cap zero guaranteed 2025 19.5 million dollars against the cap zero guaranteed so you get him in 2023 you let him play out that year and for some reason if you want to cut him 2024 2025 no dick cap at all all caps savings but again we're not doing that we're not going for any big 
big top dog like that at any position. The only hope that we can get is that Jameis Winston is probably realistic. But again, for reasons I've already explained, I'm not very interested in that. Mostly just because I don't want to be perpetually average. And then we have the linebacker, Eric Kendricks, that we may go after. Maybe Shaquille Griffin is cheap. But again, I don't really want Shaquille Griffin. I only want Eric Kendricks if he's willing to go for a really cheap deal. And then again, we're not going after any of these big names. But it's interesting. It's very interesting. I mean, the Rams trading Jalen Ramsey pre-June 1st, not even post-June 1st, was saying 5.6 million dollars but they would eat up quite a bit of dead cap like 14 million dollars which is crazy they might as well just keep them but again i think they're doing everything that they can to get rid of any players that can win them games that can help them win games just like the titans rams and titans oh you're good you gotta go man this is just not what we're doing this year i'm sorry we're gonna say it's cap savings but we trying to get one of them draft picks my boy next up the cowboys tight end dalton schultz will be hitting free agency after the team used their franchise tag on tony pollard and it was basically between Tony Pollard and Dalton Schultz, who they would use their franchise tag on. If they use it on Dalton Schultz, which I doubt that they would do anyway, we already knew they was going to use it on Tony Pollard, but it was probably a chance they would try to bring back tony pollard in some way on a contract but if they use the franchise tag on tony pollard dalton schultz was gone and as reported it looks like he's gone schultz was a solid tight end during his time in dallas with 2,122 receiving yards and 17 touchdowns during his time there he left a sour taste in the mouths of cowboys fans with the way he played at the end of their playoff loss against the 49ers i will never forget that before that game i would have been like cool bring him in on a cheap contract and even then i'm still like depends on the money just like eric kendricks if he's willing to come here for a very very cheap two to three year deal maybe like two mil a year max i'm not giving dalton schultz any real money and i'm pretty sure he's not taking anything less than probably five to seven million a year so it's basically a no as far as realistic goes because i mean that inability or just even the lack of effort to try to get both feet in bounds i believe twice against the 49ers that was terrible man i appreciate you though man shouts out to dalton Schultz for helping the 49ers beat the cowboys in the playoffs the commanders fans love you for that but bringing you over to the team for you to do that to us nah no thanks i'm good but it would be intriguing to have a dalton Schultz because again as far as the tight end position goes we have a lot lot of ceilings i love armani rogers a really high ceiling cole turner high ceiling curtis hodges interestingly high ceiling but as far as floors go a dependable tight end who knows what we're gonna get in logan thomas and john bates has a relatively high floor but he doesn't have much of a ceiling it would be nice to bring in a dalton schultz who's been very productive he would easily be the most productive tight end we have in our tight end group now you can say that's because of scheme because of dak prescott throwing him the ball versus taylor heineke and carson wentz throwing our tight ends the ball but either way Dalton Schultz is a more productive tight end coming in so you would assume that he has a higher floor which kind of makes sense I think it would make more sense for us to bring in a tight end through for agency I love Dalton Kincaid and I would give up a lung to get Darnell Washington but I think the commanders are probably going to go floor when it comes to tight ends and I'm not sure if it's even Dalton Schultz and maybe somebody else but I could see them definitely hitting tight end in free agency because again our tight end room is full of potential full of ceiling but where's the floor at where's the dependable we know that they could do this and that any given play that we need them to do and we don't necessarily have that just yet i love armani rogers and i think eric bien is gonna turn him into a star but it's still like we gotta see it and you may want to play it safe and bring in a veteran tight end maybe it's dalton schultz maybe it's not for very cheap and free agency again ron rivera said let's fill needs in free agency so when we get to the draft we can do what we want to do and not what we need to do that may be my favorite quote from him his entire regime here like that is my exact philosophy best player available in the draft at all times if you can unless you just have this dire need you need to fill but also new free agents and potential trade targets some of the top ones from jpa football shouts out to them aaron Rodgers, jalen ramsey deandre hopkins derrick henry Allen robinson eric kendricks clyde edwards hilaire maybe eric Bieniemy wants to go get his boy also mccall hartman is a free agent as well maybe eric Bieniemy wants to bring him in as a potential returner and like a gadget receiver you know we kind of have that in curtis samuel and antonio gibson already but who knows then you have bud dupree taylor lewin leonard frenette John Johnson, Marcus Mariota, who I mentioned earlier, Carson Wentz, Jameis Winston, who we already talked about, Kenny Galladay, no thanks, Robert Woods, nah, and then Cameron Brait, maybe. 
another one of those relatively high floor guys comes in with the floor maybe he's willing to go for really cheap we can see but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video let me know who are some other potential free agents and trade targets that the commanders may want to target this is not a full free agency breakdown of everybody that's available these are just the guys that are recently getting released and the guys who may be a trade target that is still currently on their teams eventually i will do a full free agency breakdown of everybody that's available that's already a free agent from other teams and things like that but that's not this video but again let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of this who do you want to bring in why and why not all of that type of stuff and of course man i appreciate all the support man leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything as always man i appreciate all the support shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name is scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out Bye.